Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to another Logic Pro tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fade out or fade in your songs the proper way using the master fader. And I'm also gonna show you another technique where you can do filter fades on your tracks. I'm really gonna show you two different techniques um, that you can use. So when clients send me their mixes, I'll often get a lot of like fade outs on the audio regions, you know, things like this. The problem with just fading out all of your audio regions is that those fades come before the track effects and they also come before any sort of mastering that's on the stereo output. And then with MIDI regions like what we have here, you can't really fade these. The fade tool doesn't work on these and you just have to, you know, automate the fade like that with, with the volume automation. Um, also, not a good idea because that volume automation still comes before your final uh, mastering plugins that you might have on your stereo output. And the reason why you don't want your fades to come before the effects is because the effects themselves can drastically affect the curve and the shape of the fade. So you have to be really careful about where you place the fade, which is why I typically do it. Uh, at least with the volume fades with the master VCA or the master fader. Before I get into the tutorial, I want to quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. Boombox is a really cool music and audio collaboration platform where you can upload your tracks, send them over to collaborators, and they can add time stamped feedback to the tracks. Boombox is great for when you want to collaborate with co-producers, co-writers, bandmates, or mixing clients. And it's not just limited to audio files anymore. You can upload entire DAW projects. So upload your entire Logic Pro project to Boombox, share it with a co-producer. They can put their swing on it, send it back to you. You mix it, you bounce it, and then you can upload the final mix and stems back to Boombox for review. What's even better is you can do all of this from your macOS desktop using the new Boombox Sync app. If you want to give Dropbox the boot, head over to boombox.io today to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so let's start with our volume fade. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the mixer with X, locate the master VCA or master fader, right click or control click on it and select create track. You can also use the shortcut control T. And what this will do is it'll create a track out here in the tracks area for the master VCA. And the master VCA, if you press A, can be automated. So press A, bring up your automation parameters, click, and then you'll see that this, the default setting or the default automation parameter is volume. So I've got this uh, last section in my song here where it repeats twice. And I think I wanna start the fade somewhere around here and then fade out to the end. But let's give this a listen. So all I'd have to do at this point is click and add the fade where I want it to go and then click over here, add another point and then pull this all the way down to negative infinity. And now I have a linear fade for the end of the song. And that'll work in a lot of situations, but what I'd like to do is I'll take this a step further and I'll select the automation curve tool and I'll use this to create a slight exponential fade. So this basically means that more of the fade happens at the front end and less uh, sort of tails off at the end. I find this just a bit smoother sounding than a linear fade uh, for fading out songs at least. And then this, this will just fade out to nothing. So there, that's how you can create a fade out. This same technique can be used at the beginning of songs to fade in the song. Typically, I don't really use fade ins much because there's, I don't know, I just, I feel like it makes the impact of the front end of the, of the song kind of minimized. 
But if you do do a fade in, I tend to recommend using a more logarithmic shape so that more of the song comes in quickly and then sort of slowly fades up to um, the top level there, zero uh, dB. So yeah, this, this song doesn't need a fade in. It has a pretty solid intro. Um, so we're gonna apply a different type of fade in to the front end, but I think a fade out would work just fine here. And if I'm being honest, you know, I'm not a huge fan of fade outs in songs. Like I would much prefer the songwriter or the composer or the producer just create an ending for the song. I'd much rather hear a finite ending to a song than a fade out, but you know, sometimes a fade out is what works best. Now, this next technique I want to show you involves doing a filter fade. And in order to do this, I'm going to go to my stereo output in the mixer. And you can add the filter really anywhere in the signal chain you want. But I typically add this after my mastering plugins, but before the final limiter. So I'm using Smart Limit here as my final limiter. So I'm going to add a filter plugin in here. And I'm going to use the Auto Filter. There are other ways to do this with EQs, but I found uh, lately I prefer doing it with the auto filter. So the auto filter has a lot of parameters in it. We don't need the distortion. We don't need the LFO. We don't need the envelope. Really all we need is this cutoff knob in the filter and either a high pass or low pass filter. So a high pass filter is a low cut filter and a low pass filter is a high cut filter. Let's start with the low cut and then I'll finish with the uh, the high cut because I think that's probably the one that's gonna sound best here. So what we need to do is kind of like the same thing we did with the master VCA. We need to show the stereo output track in the tracks area. To do that, you can right click or control click and there's a different function here called show output track. So I'm gonna select that and then you'll see that that track is down here at the bottom. Now, unfortunately, the stereo output cannot be moved, so it's gotta stay at the bottom. So I typically just zoom out a bit and then do something like that um, so I can see uh, that stereo output track. And what I'm gonna do is select, under the automation parameters here, the auto filter cutoff. And so what we're gonna be doing is automating the cutoff. And with your low cut filter, your high pass filter, you're generally speaking gonna start more on the right side. So that means more of the lows are cut. And as you sweep this down to zero, more and more of the lows will be introduced. So for this song, honestly, I'm probably not really going to use a filter on it, but um, if I were to use a filter on it, I'd probably start somewhere in this range. And then once the beat kicks in, about right there, there's some synth chords that come in too I want to account for. That's where we could have the filter be fully open, you know, so you're getting the full range of frequencies at that point. And you could also play around with different curves here as well. You could make this more drastic up front and then make most of the action happen at the end. You could certainly do that as well. So again, we're starting with less bass and then ending up with more bass at bar nine. Now, probably the more uh, common filter fade for, at least for uh, an intro like this, is going to be a low pass filter or a high cut filter, where you start with a lot of the high frequencies cut out, and then toward the end, more of the uh, high frequencies are reintroduced. And by the time you get up to 100%, Again, you're back to the full frequency range. Um, and again, you can use different um, curves and things like this, different shapes. I'm gonna do something more like this, where we start with less highs for a while, and then at the very end, more of the highs kick in.
And obviously you can repeat that exact same uh, process and that exact same technique to do a fade out if you wanted to. If you wanted to slowly fade down, you know, the top end to nothing or slowly fade up the uh, bottom end to nothing, you can do that as well. So there you go. Those are a few different techniques for creating fade ins and fade outs in your compositions in Logic Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.